Hi, I am going to talk about Molly Pitcher today. Uh, she is one of the important women from the Revolutionary War period. Um, actually, Molly Pitcher was not a single historical figure. She was probably based on several women um, who performed a service for the Continental Army. Um, but over the years and without firsthand accounts, the legend of Molly Pitcher has kind of grown into uh, something between a myth and a legend. Uh, the first woman that they suspect may have been associated with the heroic actions of Molly Pitcher was a woman named Mary Ludwig Hayes Macaulay. She was born in 1754 and she was the wife of William Hayes who was a barber who joined uh, the Continental Army as a gunner in the Pennsylvania Artillery. Uh, Mary joined her husband as one of the many camp followers who were ca compensated by the Army for services that they performed uh, in support of the Army. Camp followers then did not have the same connotation that it has today. Camp followers were women sometimes who brought their children who were married to uh, a man who served in the Continental Army and they were compensated by the Army with uh, food and shelter and other things to perform jobs like cooking, laundry, um, nursing. In the artillery, they were used to bring water to the troops who were the artillerists to cool the barrel of the gun. Uh, between each firing, the barrel had to be cooled by pouring water down it so that when the next uh, package of powder was put in it, it didn't explode. So that is one of the things that uh, Mary Ludwig Hayes probably did. The other woman was Margaret Corbin, who was also a camp follower. Um, they were both to have been known to be with Washington's Continental Army. and. Although their name wasn't Molly, Molly was a popular nickname for the first name Mary. So it's not hard to imagine that women who may have had the nickname Molly were called by the troops, Molly, bring a pitcher, meaning uh, Molly, bring a pitcher of water to cool the barrel or to quench the thirst of the artillerist. Artillery and being around cannons is a very hot job, um, especially in the summer when the heat is intense and the gun itself is gonna be hot. So the troops were probably very thirsty and needed water. And obviously they needed water to cool the barrel. So over the years, um, there wasn't a lot written about Molly Pitcher until 50 years after the Revolutionary War. And it was more of a secondhand story about one of the two women that I've suggested could have been Molly Pitcher. And it seems that over the years, the legend grew bigger and bigger and bigger, and it had Molly Pitcher actually firing a cannon. There's no proof that this ever happened, but I'm sure that it might have. Um, the biggest thing here is to understand that women who were following their husbands who were in the artillery probably had the important job of bringing pitchers of water, barrel or buckets of water to cool the cannon barrel. So we have to be careful when we look at myths that surround um, important people, especially from the Revolutionary War where we don't have a lot of firsthand accounts, um, obviously no photographic evidence. Uh, any of the drawings came very much later after the Revolutionary War. So most scholars agree that Molly Pitcher was a myth or a legend that grew out of a couple of instances where men may have talked in their diaries or talked to someone else about these women helping out with the artillery. But what it does present to us is a good foundation and a good idea of how women served with the Continental Army in a capacity of support. Um, without these women, the camp followers, uh, Washington's Continental Army probably would not have been able to win the war. 
they performed valuable services that freed up the men to do the fighting and do the things that they were trained to do. So Molly Pitcher, um, although a legend and a myth, is still an important part of our Revolutionary War past, and we should honor her legend and her myth in support of all the women that she represented. Thank you.